Today's Bible study is on whether Jesus Christ was poor or not. Many people have used verses or quotes by Jesus to determine that he was a poor man who only focused on his ministry. Before we start the Bible study, know this. Your belief in a poor God highly contributes to how you view money and financial freedom. Most people use these verses to justify their own poverty. Matthew 19.23, 26 says, It is easier for a camel to enter to go through the eye of the needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The eye of the needle was a small gate in the city wall that only allowed a camel to go through without anything on its back. Matthew 6.33, 34 says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The moment you give your life to Jesus Christ, you have found the kingdom of God. So why is it that people who have been walking with Christ for over 30 years are still struggling financially? Matthew 6.24 says, no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money, mammon. Instead of serving money, try serving God with your money. Matthew 6.19, 20 says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Storing treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy, nor thief cannot break in, is your mind. If you have a blessed and abundant mindset, you will never worry about someone stealing from you, as your mind is your greatest asset. These are just a few scriptures where Jesus spoke about money and people have taken them out of context to the point of crippling their financial future. If Christians believe the God they serve is all-powerful and almighty above every other God, why would he allow you to suffer in an area where those who don't even worship God flourish freely? God is not the problem, but wrong teachings are. Now let us go back to the seven main points of whether the incarnate of God on earth was poor. 1. The genealogy of Jesus Christ. The book of Matthew chapter 1 begins with Jesus Christ's bloodline until it got to his earthly father, Joseph. Joseph was a carpenter or tradesman in his days. Carpenters were one of the highest paid people during the time and the children of Israel were under the Roman government. Most jobs required the crafting of chariots, which were the modern cars of the time, homes and furniture. People did not have cushions back then, so furniture was highly priced. To add on, Israel is in an area with little to no trees. This made the carpentry business very profitable and lucrative. So, we see here that Joseph was well off. And if you do a deep dive into Joseph and Mary's genealogy, all their ancestors were very well off in wealth and abundance. Two, the birth of Jesus Christ. Most people think Jesus Christ being born in the manger was a sign that his parents had no place to live. Let us look at Luke 2, 1, 7, the Bible reads, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them in the inn. We clearly see that the reason Jesus was born in a manger was due to his parents going into a different town to register for a census, and Mary got into labor on their way. 
They gave birth in a manger because the inn, or what we call a hotel now, was full and had no room for them. The innkeeper suggested for them to use the manger as it was the only place with some room. The manger is what we call the parking lot or underground garage in our modern hotel buildings. Joseph and Mary later arranged to travel back to their hometown. 3. The Three Wise Men From our traditional Christmas stories, the three wise men from the East brought gifts for the newborn king. But here is something we were not told. The three wise men were king's men, or what we now call diplomats from another country. They went to Jerusalem first to give due diligence to the one in power, as that's the diplomatic thing to do. King Herod was the current king by then. This was also when Joseph and Mary were in their own house and not the manger, as it would have been about 40 days after Jesus' birth. Luke 2.22, 24 says, when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. This means the star that was shining as a beckon for the three wise men had been visible for forty plus days. As the three wise men entered Jerusalem, they had chariots of gifts. It wasn't the little hand gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh we see being handed to Mary. They brought long and multiple carriages of gifts. This is what made King Herod fear and feel jealousy towards the birth of the newborn King Jesus Christ. Herod would not have cared if the three wise men did not come with loads of horse carriages. King Herod was so shaken that he ordered his army to kill children two years and under. He knew that such a number of gifts was only fit for a king. When Joseph and Mary left for Egypt, they left with helpers to carry all the cargo. The gifts the three wise men brought were so valued that Jesus used them to support Mary and his younger siblings when Joseph died and his ministry. He used part of this money to pay wages for the main disciples, as they had their own families to feed. Men were the breadwinners who had to fully provide for their families. Why would Jesus allow them to follow him without pay? God set Jesus Christ up from the get-go to never worry about money. 4. Jesus Christ's Career Before Ministry Even though Jesus was financially well off, we still took over his father's business in carpentry after his death. If Joseph was still around when Jesus was 12 years old, he probably died when Jesus was about mid to late teens. As he must have spent a lot of time teaching Jesus how to run the business. This also means Jesus profited from the family business. The other reason why he started ministry late could have been due to him teaching his male siblings how to run the family business and help his mother raise them. As Jesus knew, he did not have long to live after starting ministry. 5. Jesus Christ's First Miracle John 2, 1, 4 To summarize the story, Jesus was attending a wedding ceremony and they ran out of wine. His mother told the wedding service to go to Jesus and do exactly as he instructed. Most people say Mary knew he would perform a miracle, but the matter of fact was due to her knowing he was rich and the breadwinner of the family. This is why he said, my hour has not yet come. 6. Feeding the 5,000 men When Jesus was told the people were hungry, he clearly instructed the disciples to give people something to eat even though they told him earlier that the village is far enough to buy food for the crowd. During these times, only men were being counted and not women, meaning 5,000 men were present and women and their daughters were unaccounted for even though they were present, making the crowd far over 5,000 people. Did you know that Jesus and his ministry team moved around with baskets to feed the crowds in such times when people could not leave due to hearing him preach? 
This is why he commanded them to bring out the empty baskets. 7. Jesus Christ Dress Code Jesus was so well dressed and so were his disciples. When he walked around with his disciples, people found it hard to distinguish who Jesus was. By then, people had no cell phones or pictures for them to know what Jesus looked like. His clothing was seamless, meaning it had no folded edges like most clothes now do to avoid the cotton coming off. He was wearing high-end clothes and had style. Here is an example in John 19.23, 24. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom, so they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. A tunic is the dress-like material Hebrew men used to wear. The soldiers refused to divide it, but decided to keep it in one piece due to its high value. They probably went and sold it for money at the end of their shift. These are seven pointers to show that Jesus was not a poor man who was just living life to die and go to heaven to enjoy his heavenly Father's riches. He was well off to the extent of denying riches from the devil during his temptation because he came from money. In the parable of the three talents, Jesus said to do business until the return of the master, meaning that we are supposed to work diligently and not just wait for the coming of Christ as most people do. It is only Christians that have a problem with financial wealth and the Israelites themselves use finances to advance their families and nation. If one denies or condemns money subconsciously, even if they pray for a miracle that involves finances, God will find it hard to provide because that which you hate stays away from you. Thank you for watching. Join the community and subscribe.